So, uh, so my presentation is going to be, this is just something I just kind of did because I wanted to. Uh, it's nothing fancy or anything, but I thought it was kind of cool, so I thought I'd share it. Um, so does everyone know what Drobo is? Everyone heard? Okay. So Drobo is a, they, they came out, I don't know, like 10 years ago. Um, they have some proprietary technology called, I think it's called Beyond Raid or something. And the idea is that you have this, uh, this box you plug in to your machine and uh, this particular one has five drive bays. Uh, they make different models that have different uh, numbers of drive bays. But the cool thing about it is that you can just slap a new, like if you only had three drives in there, you could slap a new hard drive in and it would rebalance um, your, your array. So you'd always have full redundancy. You'd never, you know, you never have to worry about losing any data. Um, and it does it all just seamlessly, which is pretty cool. It's also really expensive um, if you're cheap like me. And so uh, I never bought one, although I've always wanted one. I've also heard they're kind of slow. So, so I never got one, uh, but I thought they were pretty cool. And a few months ago, I was thinking about it. I was setting up a new server, uh, setting up RAID on the server. And I was thinking, how could you accomplish something like this so that I could I actually had, I was using an existing server and I wanted to add uh, an additional uh, drive to it. Or uh, actually it only had one drive and I wanted to add like three more drives or something. I can't remember the specifics. Um, but I wanted to uh, extend it. So I was thinking, you know, how can I do that without uh, you know, just creating new stuff and copying it over and whatnot. How can I just do it without having to, you know, take anything, you know, do it all online. Do it without having to ever make anything unavailable. So I started doing some research into how, uh, I was mainly with uh, LVM, how LVM works and ways you could, you know, thinking about how to accomplish it. And so, um, actually go, yeah. And I don't know why I did that. And, okay. So, like I was saying, in the, uh, with the Drobo, all you do, you've got three drives in here. You just put one in there. It automatically rebalances. It'll show, like, that uh, light will be yellow or something while it's rebalancing, and then it'll be green when it's all good. Uh, it'll be red if a drive fails. And so it's pretty easy to, to know what's going on and how to keep it up uh, so you never have a problem. Um, you can also, with the Drobo, you can, uh, you know, say you have four, four drives in there that are all, you know, one terabyte drives and you want to double your capacity. You pop one out, replace it with a two terabyte drive, wait till it turns green. Pop another one out, replace it with a two terabyte drive, wait till it turns green, and so forth until you've doubled your capacity. Um, takes care of it all for you, um, which is great. The, the thing I wrote is not quite so seamless as a Drobo, uh, but it does kind of uh, give you the same thing as long as you're willing to put a little more effort into it. So how can we do that? Just on Linux. Um, so we're going to start with three two terabyte hard drives. Uh, now normally, if I was going to do those, I'd you know put them together in a RAID array. Uh, did you know you can actually RAID ten these with only three drives? You have to use the a different layout than the normal RAID layout, RAID ten layout. Um, but you can do it. it basically. Um, staggers them so you get redundancy across. Anyway, you get the same effect of RAID 10. Um, you get the redundancy with the striping. 
uh, but with only three drives. So you can actually do RAID 10 with only three drives. Uh, it's just a little tricky. Okay, so we've got three hard drives. Normally what I do is just RAID them and call it good, right? That's the normal way to do things. So let's go ahead. I'll show you what we'll do instead. Um, what we're going to do is stripe them. So I arbitrarily divided them into, I, I guess it should be 128 gigabyte stripes. Um, since we all know, well, we know the hard drive manufacturers do everything in thousands, so I guess 125 is right. Um, so 125 gigabyte stripes, uh, eight stripes across. So that gives us, um, you know, each of these drives is going to have eight partitions on it. Okay, go ahead to the next. Whoa. Okay. Um, and then we're going to raid those stripes. So the first stripe in each drive will will do a normal raid. Now you can do raid five, raid ten, raid one, raid zero, whatever kind of raid you want. Um, but you just raid those across, and so you end up with eight raid uh, partitions. And then you use LVM to put them all into a single uh, volume group, and then you can divvy them up however you want. You can make multiple partitions on arbitrary boundaries, uh, but you've got this all as a single volume group that you can use. Now, <clears throat> we've got a new ter two terabyte hard drive that we want to add in, so how do we get that drive in there? <coughs> And that was the, the big question. How do you add a drive without taking it all down and copying over the data and all that um, without having somewhere else to put the data Well, you reformat everything and get it all going? So I'll show you. First, um, we got to partition it into the same uh, layout as the other drives. Now my utility that I wrote does not actually do the partitioning. So you have to do that part yourself. Um, you just tell it the partitions to use and it figures out the rest. Uh, but, um, I mean, that could be written, it's just partitioning is a little more tricky than I got into. Um, okay, so <clears throat> now if we need the space, if we don't have extra space in our volume group, if it's completely full, then what we need to do is add a couple stripes into the volume group before we get started so that we have some extra space because so, things are going to get moved around. Um, we need to have somewhere for, those, for that data to go. Um, if you have extra space on your volume group, then you don't need to do that um, as long as you have enough. So now we're going to go ahead and remove this first stripe uh, from the volume group and unrate it. So we had these three drives, or these three partitions were, were rated together. And so we, we took them out of the volume group. Um, so you can do that, and it'll, you have to do a couple commands. First you do a command to move all the data off of those partitions, and then you, remove, then you can remove it from the volume group. Um, so once you've completed that, uh, then you can just remove it, unrate it, and then and then we recreate, we, we raid across all four drives instead of just the three. So we include the new drive, just that first partition in our raid partition. So now we're across all four. So we've got, you know, depending on what kind of RAID we're using, we either have better redundancy or faster uh, access. So one or the other, okay? Um, then we add it back into the LVM, and then we're just gonna go uh, after this. Uh, we're just gonna keep on doing that. So we'll take out one stripe at a time one RAID partition at a time, take it out of the volume group, 
uh, extend it across all four drives and then add it back in. And eventually we get that. So, um, so my utility does not handle partitioning, like I said. You have to do that yourself. Um, basically, here's, here's what it does. Um, so first it removes the new partition uh, from the volume group, if that's necessary. Um, uses uh, PV move to move all the logical volumes off of the existing RAID device. So PV move is the one I mentioned. That, that tells it, um, you know, it, what it first does is it figures out what, uh, what logical, what is it, logical volumes? Yeah, logical volumes are on that physical, physical volume. I'm trying to remember my LVM terminology. Physical volumes, the logical volumes are occupying, is that it? Yes. Okay. So, and then we, well, which physical volumes are on the logical volume that we want to remove? Okay. And we move them off of there. And then we can remove, we use VG reduce, to say, okay, this, this uh, logical volume, or this physical volume is no longer being used for anything. I can pull it out of the volume group. Um, we have to tell it it's no longer a physical volume. Um, we stop the array device. And if you don't zero the super block, then MD-ADM gets mad in the future on the next step. So we do that too. Uh, we recreate the RAID device, um, including the new partition. Um, and then we make the new RAID device a PV, a, a physical volume, using PV create, and add it back into our volume group. So that's, that's basically what my utility does. It handles all that magical stuff for you, so you don't have to do it. Um, but it lets you, you, you get a new drive, you just partition it, and then you go through, and you do one stripe at a time and tell it what to do. So, and it, it takes care of all the, the grunt work for you. So you don't, because it's, you know, basically, the, the partitioning, like I said, partitioning is a, it is a little more tricky because it depends, especially if you have uneven uh, hard drives, it's kind of hard to, you know, I, I figured you'd probably want to be in charge of how you uh, wanted things set up. Uh, for example, on mine, I do have uneven drive sizes, and so the ones that are bigger, um, the extra space are actually RAID zeroed, and then the rest of it is RAID 10 and um, so we have RAID 10 across all the drives, and then the three that are bigger have a RAID zero uh, stripe across, or a few stripes across them that I can use for stuff that you know I, I don't care as much about if it gets lost um, I just want it to be fast so that's that's kind of what what I've done with it um, but it does let you kind of control that but when you get to the the repetitive part it takes care of all this stuff for you so how long does it take with the adding another two terabytes? it yeah it, it takes a while because each time it has to copy when you do the um, PV move, that's the, the expensive step. The PV move takes a while because um, it has to copy everything uh, from one, um, you know, from yeah, one LV. And if you're, yeah. yeah. Because you have to go through everything. Yeah. Like, yeah, it depends how much, how full your volume group is. Um, if you're smart about it, you can, if it's not full, and you're smart about it, you can avoid, you know, like if you've got uh, one of your PVs that doesn't have anything on it, do that one first. Then it doesn't have to do anything. And then stuff will get moved onto it later, and it won't have to get, because you could be moving stuff more than once, if, depending on what order you do things. So, anyway, that's, that's kind of the, you, you just have to think about how you're, how you're doing it. So you get it. Right. Um, I think so. That's that's pretty much it. I think I've got one more with the. That's the. So I wrote it in PHP. Um, yeah, I know. Go with 
what you know. Yeah. Well, I want to. I, I do want to rewrite it in Perl or Python or something. Um, just got, well, it's more likely to be on a server. Um, Perl and Python are generally there. Uh, PHP sometimes is, sometimes isn't. So it's always there on my servers. So that's what I. That's what I did it in. But it's not that complicated a script, and so I, I think it would be pretty easy to. to Perl would probably be pretty easy to, to do it in. Um, but that's the, the syntax. Um, it does have some, some stuff, uh, the chunk and layout. Uh, those are things with the, uh, like grade 10 or grade five, they have specific options. So you can set those options. Uh, it helps you, uh, well, the layout is what I was saying with grade 10. So you can do the far layout far near so you can do uh, the staggered uh, things so you can actually do it on an uh, odd number of drives. And then the um, chunk I believe is a RAID 5 thing. Um, so you need to, you want to specify the chunk if you're using RAID 5. And uh, and those actually, and that, that might be for RAID 10 too, but um, you then, there's some things also I have on that page the GitHub page, there's also some information, some links. Um, if you want to get the most performance out of it, uh, just making sure you get your uh, file system aligned properly with your chunk size and stuff like that. There's a bunch of stuff you have to do to, to make everything really uh, work well. But that's all. I mean, some people might not care about that stuff if you're trying to eke that last 5% of performance out of your system, then that, that kind of stuff you want to do. So, any questions? All right. Cool. Thanks. If anyone wants to help me rewrite it in Perl, I... <laughs>